I am the Commissar. That's my name. Forged Alliance Forever. That's the game. And who have we got with a claim to fame? Today, the cold team up here in the northeast faces the hot team down here in the southwest. I suppose we better go and meet them. Going first here for cold team, this is Blinchik. He's 1978 rated. He's Seraphim in dark blue. And next to him, this is Dreamer Lazy. He's 1509 rated. He's Cybron in baby blue. And their mirrors on the hot team. We'll start here looking at Natron, who is 1863 rated and UEF in Burgundy. And his ally here, Furcotia, 1746 rated, also UEF in red. Now, the map is Adaptive Tourmaline. This is a new map to me, I've never seen it before. First thing we note is this. Look at this. This is, is a huge heap of civilian buildings protected by a few turrets, so incoming units will have to watch out for those, which will well be worth getting into and reclaiming. Other than that, there's reclaim scattered all around the map. This central area is on a raised plateau, and there are only a couple of ways up to it, so it could be a place to take and hold. These plateaus at the back have no way up onto them other than drops, but they are edge building. But they do have three mechs each and a decent smattering of reclaim. Very early labs out here for Dreamer. No scouts to support them, which is a little surprising to me, but that's his choice. I would definitely have built a couple of scouts and sent them to assist to catch up. But also, he's 1500 rated, I'm 8 or 900 rated, what, does it, what do I know? Everyone else seems to be going quite greedy with no other early aggression. Look at all these NGs completely unguarded. This lab and this lab might actually both claim kills. We'll have a look and see. So here's an NG trying to get this quad of mexes. And that hunter is not at all happy with the prospect. The NG tries to dodge and tries to get it for reclaim. But the hunter dodges out of range and boom, down goes the NG. Nice catch, denying these two mechs for a little while. However, this e lab has got up to guard this mech rather than coming down for this one, so it may not get as much done. And seeing Natron's com coming, or just suspecting it, this lab runs away to guard this mech. Early bomber out over here for for Kotcha. That lab pushing in. Looks like it's going to get this NG. Bang. Indeed it does. Big drop there from Blin. We'll follow it in a moment. Meanwhile, the bomber comes around to try and grab another NG, but it's been seen by the dropship and by the Selenes. Speaking of Selenes, there goes the bomber. I hope you all noted my little poll. What's the correct pronunciation? Is it Selene or Selene or Selen? As of now, Selene is leading the poll and so that's what I'm going to call it. If you disagree, go and vote. If you agree, go and stop those stupid disagreeers by voting for Selene. Either way, here is a nice little drop from Blin, which has a couple of techs to guard and a couple of NGs to get set up. All very good. This lab hasn't killed anything. It's been seen. This tank will easily take it out. Natron is sending artillery to clear the defences here from the centre so that he can come in and reclaim it. Still, he's mispositioned it and loses an RT to that point defence. The RT outranges the point defence, so he really had no excuse for that. 
Fur's Com pushing up here and Dreamer's Com pushing symmetrically as it were around here. Nate tried a little earlier to the middle with his Com and Blin hasn't brought any arty, so he'll want to put a bit of arty up from these factories perhaps before he goes in. Might give Natron a lead on the reclaim if he can pop this turret before he goes in. Engineers being dropped quite far forward here for Dreamer, trying to get set up. He hasn't reacted to the drop yet. There we go. Now he sees them and immediately goes for a factory as you'd expect. For Kocha coming in with his comm. Now he's going to have to be careful of this because his comm is presently naked and there's a few bits of spam here. There's PD going up. I think that PD will complete before Fakocha gets it. Ooh, the NG's are about to go down, but the PD goes up. Still, fakocha has got a little bit of spam in support. He's got his comm, and this isn't fully entrenched yet. So I think he's going to be fine. I think he's going to be able to take out this little emplacement and overthrow it in the name of the UEF. And he's just reclaiming this factory. Nice touch. Yeah, I don't think that he'll have a problem taking that over. Meanwhile, back to the middle. And Natron has indeed got in there earlier. He's taking out these buildings. He's got engineers coming up to provide um, build power to reclaim. He's sucking stuff up. All very nice. Blin, just a little later with his artillery pieces, coming in to take it out. And Dreamer pushing forward with his com. Not much spam though. I would like a little more spam behind Dreamer in order to support him because his engineers have been taken out and that factory has been denied by Natron spam. So Dreamer knows there's a decent heap of spam here from Natron. Looks like I'm not seeing much... Oh, there we go. Okay, now that we are. I was about to say we're not seeing much actual reclaim from Natron, but he has got these three boys. And with the... Is this a bug? Look at that. They're flicking between these war sectors, but they're not really getting anything done there. That feels like a, a, an actual bug, and that Natron needs to spot it and move these so they get something done. Because... Blin is definitely looking to evict him, and Blin has rather... Actually, I was going to say he has more spam, but he's only got a couple of Zooey's in there. We'll see how it turns out. Drop there from Dreamer as he brings in Engies to set up a PD. He's got his comm, he's actually put that factory up, though it's very bad, though immediately it goes down. Boom. But he has got a factory over here that can then support. Meanwhile, how's Fercotcher doing? Over here, he's hoovering up the reclaim. He's got a bit of spam here. So, a bit of a face-off here. Picks off an engineer. I think the main interest is, look at this. Blin has hoovered up the middle. How's the reclaim looking? Well, the cold team are 2,000 reclaim ahead. And that's pretty much all down to Blin. So it looks like Blin actually was able to take much more advantage of this than Natron in the end. And Natron doesn't seem to really care about what's left, which is fair, given that it's all wall sections and they're basically nothing. He's coming over here, and it looks like he's planning to take on Dreamer. Meanwhile, let's have a quick eco check as Natron goes on to the gun upgrade. So is Fur. Blinchik. Blinchik is power stored. He's balanced on mass, but he's power stored. He needs some power up. And Dreamer is nearly overflowing mass because he's only just got his power, only barely under control. That's crazy, but yet they've got more mass than Hot Team. And that's because Natron is also power stored. And so was Fur Kocha. Okay. That was not what I was expecting. Literally everyone is power stored. Understandable for the two boys going for gun, though Dreamer has also started gun. Blin's still naked and unupgraded though, so um... But look at this, this is lovely. 
with Green rooting to the spot, Natron is doing a double run by on both sides and Dreamer can't bring his com to support either side. This the uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Expansion from Dreamer smashed by Natron's tanks. Nothing to defend here. Sure there's a bit of production, but with Dreamer having power problems, he's having to pause it and Natron's tanks can just smash it. Over here we have a drop coming in from Furcotcha. There are inties there, is it going to drop? It does drop, just about, but there are tanks here from Blin. Furcotcha focuses the mechs, and he does get it, but he loses the rest of the drop. Still, he killed a mech, so it could have been worse. And Fakot just finished the gun and pushed up here, driving back Blin's exploratory little advance on this side. But over here, we have Dreamers sandwiched by that spam from Natron. And Natron's bringing his gun com in, and sure, Dreamer finished the gun, but look at this delicious blocking. Delicious from Natron, who has managed to cut Dreamer's retreat off. And Dreamer is down into the red, and there's no escape for him. Boom! Dreamer explodes, our first ejection at 11 minutes, leaving Blinchik or on his own. And Natron has all of these tanks coming into the back. He's taken out a mex here, he's gonna get some more mexes here if these boys have anything to say about it. And his com is pushing forward, or looks to be pushing forward, with a decent amount of spam behind it. Blin tries to call him back with this push, but Natron's got more than enough here. Meanwhile, Falcoccia is also pushing on the other side. He's got a bit of spam. Blin's got a bit of spam, but Blin's also got Ilshis in there, and that could make the difference, because Ilshis are tough. Ilshis are the toughest of the T2 land basic units. Falcoccia does have gun, though, so... And he's got a couple of pillars in there supporting, but he's mainly T1. But Blin decides now is not the time to threaten that and fall back. Natron is pushing up here and Blin really hasn't got enough to stop it. But before they connect, let's have a quick look at Ecos again to see whether anyone's recovered. Blin, still having problems with power but just about balanced. Just about. I think he'll be able to get it under control and there you go. Indeed he does. Natron still a power stored and that's costing him immense amounts of mass. Natron, my dude, you've been power stored for so long and you're not even on an upgrade this time in order to make, have an excuse for it. Gunships there from Blin, we'll check on them in a moment. And for Kocha, well balanced but spending quite a bit of mass. Those gunships are easily cleared up by Natron's into. So Natron has spent a lot of the early portion of this game power stored and that might be costing him. Though that said, Hot Team have now managed to take the eco lead over Blin, so may maybe it's not costing him too much. But that said, if he weren't power stored, what could he have done? And Fur has to watch out, because that is a lot of Ilshis coming down on him. And he's down into the yellow. He's building PDs to fall back to, but is he falling back fast enough? He's got the gun, but he's shedding hit points and Fakotcha's down into the red, and look at all those Ilshis, that's a huge horde of Ilshis. And it was not enough for that to, for point defence, Fakotcha dies. Boom. At 13 minutes, and now it's 1v1, Blinchik versus Natron, the two top rated players on each team. And Blin has fallen back with his comm, because Natron is getting deep into Blin's territory here. He's a little far away from his spam and what spam he has on this side is mainly T1. Blin meanwhile has T2 as well as gun so he may be able to repel Natron and if I were Natron I would be worried about being this deep in enemy territory. Meanwhile Blin is picking up hordes of engineers. Where does he plan to drop them? I think he might be going for a bit of reclaim over here because look at that. That is a tasty amount of reclaim. If I zoom out we see that there is about 4,000 reclaim to pick up there. Now, I don't believe Natron is power stalling anymore, looking at that, having inherited Fur's base.
but in fact he's overflowing mass because he now doesn't know what to do with all that mass he was producing. So that again is an error that he needs to remedy. He's got a lot of assistance on his T2 air factory and a lot of assistance on his HQ which is now T3 and that could make the difference against those Ilshis. And we have a couple of Titans here pushing in to the right. I see four so far. How's Blin doing on land tech? Well, he's still at T2 and he hasn't even started the T3 upgrade, so those Titans could be a nasty surprise. Natron has wisely fallen back with his comm as Blin clears up the spam. He has his comm here, he has T2 point defense. I think Natron is wise to fall back a bit. He's also got a couple of Corsairs supporting the Titan push, but Blin has Inties, and Inties in that sort of numbers are more than a match for Corsairs. Corsairs only become a threat air to air. I say Corsairs, I actually mean Janus. Corsairs or Janus are only a threat air to air, and you have a big crowd of them. Let's have push in here into the mid, but I don't think it's going to threaten Blin's hold on the mid. He has Ilshis in here, he has turrets he has production I think he's reason to be safe these Titans however they're going to be more of a threat there's an Ilshi and the Titans are going to poke it down with barely a scratch a Yenzine comes along and also dies and these Titans are getting into the eco only T1 mechs is here so far but they could get damage done And it looks like we've got a big fighter bomber scuffle going down here. But Blin's got a lot of inties and Natron hasn't. So it seems that Natron's managed to kill off those couple of fighter bombers, apart from maybe one from Blin. But he's losing the fighter bombers off his own to Blin's inties. And overall, I think that's an air win for Blin. Here are those titans though. This one has uh, survived right the way to the back of Blin's base. These ones are pushing in at the front. Mex is dead here, Mex is dead here, Mex is under threat here. They need to shoot that turret, and they do. Or rather, and they try to. Focus the turret, my dude. It's pung by Fercotcha, and he does focus it. Is he actually going to get any of those mexes though? I think he will, and these are T2 mexes, so these will be worthy scalps to claim. And Blin is actually losing quite a bit of eco to this push. However, Ilshis are now in there, the Titans are getting damaged, and they're down, and that push is dead. Oh, apart from this Titan over here, nicely positioned, it's going to take out the entities which are coming to rebuild. So that was good and profitable, aggressive work from Natron on the right here. Now there are Ilshis coming through mid, and Natron has to watch out for those, but he's got Titans here, he's got T2 point defences here, and he's also built some more Janus, so I think that he won't have a problem. He's lost to Amex but it's nothing like the damage he inflicted on Blin over here. Speaking of eco, he's still overflowing. How is he still overflowing, my dudes? Natron, my man, you really need to spend that eco. Blin is pretty well balanced, actually. He's spending a little more than he can afford, but that's understandable given what he's just lost. However, he has got dudes in and rebuilding. He lost a, uh, That Titan came in here and killed the Hydro, but Blin cleaned it up with bombers. Feels like Blin has the map control now, but this tech advantage that Natron has, he could definitely make it pay. Has Blin responded in kind? Well, yes he has, and he's getting out his first Ophium here. I think that's his first Ophium? Yeah, it looks like it. But one Ophium compared to several Titans, I know where my money is. That said, I don't believe... Ooh, nice gunship play here might stop some of these Titans. I don't believe that Natron has seen those Ophiums, and therefore I don't... In fact, we can check that now. He knows it's T3, 
but he hasn't really got any intel, which is quite bad. How's Blin's intel? Well, Blin's intel isn't great because he's power stalling, but if it were better, he'd be able to see some stuff around here. Oof, that's pretty bad. Blin, my man. I was being rude to Natron about his power, now I'm being rude to you about your power. This is a game where everybody has mismanaged their ecos quite a bit. Now Natron is bringing his com up to mid with a mix of light spam. Courses come over, oh but they're not going for the com, they're going for this pgen. This pgen goes down, this pgen goes down. And Natron well, he had a nice full power bar for a change, but now that is sagging away. That is draining fast, and he's going to have to put this up quickly. But he's got a lot of energies on this power. He's got this power queued up on the wreck as well. So I think he'll recover in reasonably short order. And another big titan push comes up the side, and now he's seen the Othiums. But it's still only a couple of Othiums and a lot of titans. However, seeing the Othiums means that he should be planning to switch into Percy's quite soon. And this is actually quite a good Titan raid up here, it claims a mix. But it's running into the PD and it's running into the COM and with Gun and T2, these Titans can easily be overcharged by Blin's COM. Assuming he's got his power production back. Which I think he has, that looks like he's got Okay, nope, I'm telling lies, he hasn't got overcharged, but he's still managing to clean up the titans with that firepower from his gun com. Meanwhile, Natron advances into the middle. He's got a bit of titan support here, which is nice, but just the gun, no nano, no shield, I would not be going into the middle with that when I know there were Othiums about. And yet he is. Lots of engineers cheekily sucking up the reclaim here from Blin. If like, one of these titans just walked up here, it could kill them all. But it hasn't. That said, there's an entire map for Natron to manage. So it's understandable that he hasn't yet. And Natron has pushed forwards quite a long way. But Blin is running past him here with a nice load of spam. It's still mostly T1. But there's only T1 really up against it, and Natron is suddenly looking quite alone as we can see Othiums here coming in from Blin. Big air engage, and Natron has been building a lot of inties. I think he's going to take the air win here. And he's sending Titans to deal with this run by from Blin, so I don't think he's going to lose a great deal. However, he is behind on Eco again, and Blin has quite a significant lead. He, he is defending both sides with Titans, though he still has to clean this up and may lose a few mixes, but these are still only T1. Nice defense here, but that's a lot of Othiums. I think those Titans are going to die unless Natron is quick. He's getting more Titans up, but where were the Percy's? Natron, this is Ophium's stuff. You need Percy's. And he has lost these Nexes, and he's got a Titan chasing down the spam. But he might lose another if he's not on the ball about it. And again he pushes through mid with T3 and Com. And he is, to be fair, getting more work done this time. He's taking out the spam factories, he's taking out mexes. He could push across here. This is a T3 support factory, and if he can push in here before it makes much more, that would be rather excellent. But it is producing, it's producing Othiums, and they're coming down here. That is two T3 support factories so far for Natron here. And they could be under threat, because at the moment the only thing guarding them is this T1 point defence. But there's the Percy's we were talking about. 
out comes a Percy, and with the help of that Percy, I think that Othium is not going to have a chance to do any damage. Good work from Natron. And indeed, he's pushing right here, as I said he should. I like the way I'm saying this as if I know better than he does. Look at that, he's 1800 rated. That's like a thousand better than me. So. Across he comes with his titans. But before too much can get done, a swarm of Othiums charges in from the side, hitting this attack in the flank, and suddenly it's all dead in seconds. Another crowd of Othiums, and Natron needs Percy's there, but he's got three Percy's, he's got support factories producing Percy's. 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 He's got more Percy's and Titans coming up here. That should be enough to defend, so good defense on that side. He's got Janus handling defense on this side, and since there's no anti air in there, I think to manage. Blin has some inties, but he's not responding with them. But Blin now has T3 air, so that could be dangerous for Natron. We could see ASFs coming to deal with these Janus. We could also see an air snipe, which now that there's only one player aside, an air snipe suddenly becomes a lot more of a deadly thing to worry about. Not to be deterred, Blin's Othiums are pushing in again here. And it looks like Blin's planning to support with Zui spam if he can get these factories up, but these dudes might kill the engineers. The Titans are here, but Percy's are coming out. Will it be enough to hold? Two Percy's. The Othiums are a bit trickling in here. One of them dies. Good positioning from Natron as he dodges the Othium shots. Percy's opening fire. More Percy's coming up from behind. And this looks like it's going to be another successful hold. Yet more Othiums come in, but against this many Percy's, I think this is throwing good Othiums after bad, and they're likely to die too, and it looks like Blin agrees because he's moving them away. Natron setting up camp, and a quick little raid of Corsairs from Blin takes out a couple of Mexes, so good attack there. He hasn't shown his T3 air yet. Well, now he has, because here comes a scout flying across. And what's this I see over here? Is this a sneaky little Othium drop while Natron's air is distracted with this fight over here? Yes, it is. One comes down here, and that'll easily claim those two mixes. But this is more deadly still. Natron has these mechs up here, having edge built a factory, but one Othium should be more than enough to take this out, because that's T1, and this Othium is T3. So that's a lovely play from Blin. A charge from Natron heads through the mid. And after that defence, there's not actually much T3 here to stop it. I think these support factories, especially this one, is going to be the important one. I think they're going down. I'm not going to ask how that drop got there, says Natron. Teleport, says Dreamer. Nobody asked you, says Natron. So this feels like quite a desperate charge up through the middle, but it has got some work done. But the problem for Natron is that he hasn't got anything to support it, and there are now whalers raining fire down on it from above and with these ASFs that Blin's brought in Natron just doesn't have an answer to the broadsword and he's getting in there he's gonna get some damage done but I think that there's enough Othiums here that with the help of the broadswords those Percy's are just going to die
and so they do. And we've had another Othium drop landing here, this time three Othium, it's going to hit a bit of power. It's not going to power store Natron this time because he has got this shielded T3 Tegen over here. And there are Perseids to defend, but this Othium, having cleaned up the top, has come down here to help out. This could have done more damage, I feel. It hasn't actually achieved much, having killed one T2 P gen. But, nice little drop there as well. Othiums and Zooey's. And it feels like Natron is very much on the back foot. More Percy's in the middle. And a big heap of strikers. They feel a bit unnecessary. There's enough factories there that spam can simply swarm them down. But Blin isn't having any of it, and those support factories that have been so useful or game are being smashed down by whalers. That was very tenacious, that little emplacement there from Natron, but it's down. I believe that's Dreamer teasing Natron for being um, inexperienced, if I understand it correctly. Something about teaching your grandfather to suck eggs or the like, responds Natron. So a bit of smack talk, but what can Natron do? Well, it looks like he thinks nothing. Boom! I think that game was all about the eco there. Could Hot Team have won if Natron and Furcotcha had better power management, especially Natron, who was power stored for a huge portion of that game. And then later on, Natron was overflowing math for so much of it. That was all about eco-management, and I feel that with just a little more build power in the right place at the right time, Natron could have taken that, because those Percy pushes at the end were really getting work done. Anyway, tell me what you think about that in the comments below while you're down there. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I am the Commissar, and I will see you next time.